بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء وبعد قال الله تعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب ولهو وزينة وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد كمثل غيث أعجب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فتراه مصفرا ثم يكون حطاما وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ومغفرة من الله ورضوان وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور سابقوا إلى مغفرة من ربكم إلى آخر الآية These are ayat from Surah Al-Hadid Surah Al-Hadid is a chapter in the Quran in the 27th juz after Surah Al-Waqi'ah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah draws our attention to a very important reality. He says, I'lamu, O human beings, know very well. I'lamu, Allah says. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah is reminding us of the reality of this worldly life in a very concise and beautiful manner so that we are not left in deception. Allah says, I'lamu. And remember, this is not a uh, financial expert who is telling us this. This is not the most wealthy man in the world who is telling us this. This is not the most healthy person in the world, the most famous person in the world. This is the creator of the world who is telling us this. We're talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us what this worldly life is. There can be no doubt of what Allah is saying. There could be no objection to what Allah is saying. There could be no questioning of his knowledge of what he is saying. He created everything. He knows better than anyone else what he created. Allah says, the one who created, does he not know his creation? He knows it better than any one of us. He knows it better than all human beings. Thus when Allah says something about this life, we should pay attention. Allah says, I'lamu. The creator of the world says, know very well. أَنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا لَعِبٌ وَلَهْوٌ وَزِينَةٌ وَتَفَاخُرٌ وَتَكَاثُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this worldly life can be summed up into five stages. لَعِب, play, لَهْو, amusement, وَزِينَةٌ وَتَفَاخُرٌ Adornment, beauty, and boasting over one another. وَتَكَاثُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ And competing with one another in wealth and in children, in contacts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is all this life is about, this worldly life. It's about play. The commentators mention that play is referring to the earlier stages of a person's life, when a person is an infant. All a person is concerned of a child, an infant, is play. And the word la'ib refers to play that has no specific objective. Children, when they play, they don't have any objective in mind. It is just to amuse themselves. It is just to keep themselves occupied with something they are interested in. But there's no worldly or religious objective behind their play. Infants, when they are engaged in play with their toys. This is la'ib. Allah says this worldly life is la'ib. All it is is play. 
lahu then a, a, a human being he progresses from an infant to a teen an adolescent allah says the next stage is lahu amusement amusement is engaging in activities to occupy oneself in matters that a person is interested in but there are some objectives behind it which also has to do with play but there are some sometimes good objectives sometimes ill objectives like for example playing for the purpose of physical fitness for the purpose of exercise mental uh, health uh, for these reasons but there is some objective behind this amusement this is the next stage of the human's life lahwun uh, he engages in amusement to amuse himself then when the human being progresses further into adulthood and middle aged human beings whatever they were doing before does not interest them anymore and now their interest in in zinatun wa tafakhurun bainakum in the latest fashion trends zina beautification adornment fashion in their clothing fashion in their cars fashion in their homes this is what the human being becomes in, intrigued with interested in wa tafakhurun bainakum and to boast over one another in these matters of zina adornment and fashion eventually the human brain progresses to old age the latter part of his life and allah says in that part of his life his interest is accumulation of wealth how he can amass the most amount of wealth and compete with others in doing so there is an element of boasting in the latter part of one's life also in how much wealth a person amasses how much am i leaving behind how many homes how many properties how many vehicles what do i own and what he is leaving behind in relation to family this becomes his primary concern or his this is what occupies him until he reaches the final stages of his life or the final moments and sometimes people give their lives in this state takathurun fil amwali wal aulad competing one, with one another in the amassing of wealth and family and eventually they die allah says know very well this is all this life is about and the commentators beautifully explain at the end allah says of this aya wa mal hayatu dunya illa mata'ul ghurur that oh human beings you should understand the life of this world is a merchandise of deception mata'ul ghurur in other words in a manner in which a merchant who wants to sell his merchandise and the merchandise is deficient it's defective and he knows if people are aware of this defect this deficiency they will not buy it so he tries to cover the defect he adorns his merchandise and he covers it with adornment with other types of packaging or sometimes he tries to hide the blemishes of his merchandise so that it can be sold the purchaser when he sees this merchandise he thinks it to be very nice attractive beautiful beneficial and he end, ends up purchasing that merchandise eventually after utilizing and using that merchandise he realizes he was deceived he eventually realizes that the blemishes were hidden and now he has become aware of them allah says wama al hayatu dunya the worldly life is nothing besides merchandise by which people are deceived merchandise of deception the scholars explain that in these stages of life that allah is mentioning in this ayah every subsequent stage a person realizes the irrelevance and trivialness of the previous stage if we think about it when a child becomes an adolescent and looks back at the way he used to play when he was an infant he sometimes laughs at himself like how could i do that 
I was playing with these toys, these little marbles, these little stones and sticks. This is what I was spending my time in. And he realizes that how trivial and useless that activity was, that he was engaged in while he was an infant. But when he was an infant, that was the most important thing of his life. If you were to take those sticks away from a child, the child would not bear or, or that suffering that you're taking something away that is so valuable to that child. But when that child grows up to be a teen, adolescent, he looks back at those days and he uh, understands and realizes how trivial that was, how insignificant and how foolish sometimes his behavior was. And now he's an adolescent, he knows where to spend his time. But as this adolescent grows into adulthood, and when zina and tafakhur become his purpose, when the, uh, the, the latest fashion trends and boasting over one another becomes the objective, then he looks back at the way he spent his teen years and he says, what a waste of time. I used to spend so much time doing this, like that, that gave me nothing in life. I wasted all my time. He looks back at that part of his life and he realizes how trivial and insignificant it was. And now what he is engaged in is so much more important. The same, in other words, every previous stage seems to be a deception. That look at the way I spent my time then. As he grows older, at the, in the latter part of his life, he realizes that the money spent on fashion, on boasting over one another, was all a waste. It got me nothing. Right? When I was trying to keep up with the latest fashion trends, eventually a person reaches a stage in his life where he realizes that was all a waste. It was a huge deception. Right? And the earlier a person comes out of this stage, the better it is for him. Right? But eventually he realizes that that, that was of no value to him in his life. And the most important thing is takathur fil amwali wal awlad, amassing wealth. Right? Trying to build one's reputation and connection throughout the world. That is the most important. I need to leave a legacy before I leave this world. Eventually this person dies and he will also realize that this final pursuit that he engaged in was also a deception. Every stage of a person's life he will realize that it was a deception. Mata'ul ghurur. And in this way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us, and he gives a beautiful example, an example he uses in many places in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he continues in this ayah, he says, dunya means the life of this world. Then Allah says, this, these stages and this whole life of the human being in this world, you can resemble it to a metaphor of this life is Allah says it's like rain that comes down and irrigates the crops, the land, the trees, the flowers, the spring that we see every year in which flowers bloom, fruits grow, lush gardens grow. Allah says, this life is like this rain that falls and it irrigates this land. And the farmers, those who are tending to this land, uh, al kuffar nabatuhu, kuffar here means zurra, the farmers. Those farmers working on this land, they become extremely impressed with the crops that have grown. The, the bloom of these crops and these flowers and this, this, this lush grass, grass, they become impressed with it. But eventually as we see, as spring goes by and the beautiful scenery of summer we enjoy, eventually, how can we relate that to what we are saying? Eventually time is up of our worldly life. Um, if you can, I don't know, it's gonna be difficult to pay attention.
If you can try to ignore that sound, inshaAllah. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says then, eventually the, f the fall comes that we are seeing now, where the color of leaves change. Eventually the, these leaves will fall on the ground and become dust. They will become crushed and thrown away and discarded. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Musfarran thumma yakunu hutama. This is the reality of the worldly life we experience in these stages. They come, they impress us, and they go, and eventually they will, they will become like a memory of the past. And we will have no real significant value that we will associate to these stages. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, human beings, know very well this is the life of this world. Don't be deceived. Don't fall into this deception. Don't think of this life more than what it is. Don't spend your energy boasting over one another, competing with one another in fashion. Don't waste your time in these trivial pursuits. Don't waste your time in trying to be the most famous person, the person who is the, the, has the most likes, the person whose reputation is, and so on. All the worldly pursuits that we see human beings struggling for. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that all of this one day will be nothing, will be like the crushed leaves on the ground. Allah says, after this example, ثُمَّ يَكُونُ حُطَامًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ وَمَغْفِرَةٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانٌ Then the true purpose of this life will manifest. And that will manifest in the next life. Where some human beings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَغْفِرَةٌ وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ In the afterlife for some human beings, those who were deceived by this worldly life, for them will be severe punishment. وَمَغْفِرَةٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانٌ And on the other hand, for those who understood the true reality of this life, and they did not allow this material right life to overcome them, and they were able to utilize this life to uh, sow the seeds for their afterlife. They were able to manage this life in such a manner that they built their afterlife. Allah says, for them, وَمَغْفِرَةٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانٌ will be forgiveness from Allah and His pleasure. And Allah ends the verse by that part what, that we mentioned. The life of this world is nothing but a merchandise of deception. That's may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us all live in this life uh, free from being deceived. May Allah protect us from this deception. It looks very attractive, but it has nothing to show for. Eventually, we will understand the deficiency and the defects of this worldly pomp and glory that human beings are pursuing. They will have nothing to show for it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let not this worldly life become the greatest of our concerns. Allahumma la taj'ali dunya akbar ahammina. The Prophet has made this dua. He has taught us this dua. Allahumma la taj'ali dunya akbar ahammina. Allah, do not make this dunya the greatest of our concerns. And the height of our understanding and knowledge. May Allah give us the tawfiq. Alhamdulillah, alladhi bayyana lana afzal al-masaliki wa ahsan al-adab. Wa wafaqa man sha'a min ibadihi li sulukiha wa huwa al-hakim al-wahhab. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الحمد وإليه المرجع والمآب وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الذي قام بالأخلاق الفاضلة وأتمها وحذر أمته من سفاسفها وأرذلها صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين تمسكوا بآدابه وانتهجوا مناهجها وسلم تسليما أما بعد فيا أيها الناس 
اتقوا الله سبحانه وتعالى واعلموا ان ما يتصف به الناس من الاخلاق على وجهين اخلاق فاضله شريفه حث الدين عليها وامر بها واخلاق رذيله سافله حذر عنها وزهد بها الا وان من الاخلاق الفاضله بر الوالدين بالاحسان اليهما قولا وفعلا في الحياه وبعد الممات الا وان من برهما بعد الموت الدعاء لهما والاستغفار لهما وانفاذ وصيتهما وصله الرحم التي لا توصل الا بهما واكرام صديقهما ومن الاخلاق الفاضله صله الارحام وذلك بتعاهدهم بالبر والانفاق ولطف الكلام فان من وصل رحمه وصله الله ومن قطعها قطعه الله ومن الاخلاق الفاضله حسن الجوار وذلك باكرام الجار والتودد اليه باللطف القول له والهديه ان كان غنيا وبالصدقه ان كان فقيرا فما زال جبريل يوصي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بالجار حتى ظن انه سيورثه وحتى قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لابي ذر رضي الله تعالى عنه إذا طبخت ميقة فأكثر ماءها وتعاهد جيرانك ومن الآداب الإسلامية الفاضلة إفشاء السلام وإظهاره بأن تقول لأخيك المسلم السلام عليكم وتشير مع ذلك للبعيد لمن لا يسمع ومن يسلم مرة ولم يسمع فليعدها ثلاثا ومن رد السلام فليقول وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله ولا يقتصر على قول أهلا وسهلا ولا تقول هاي ويسلم الصغير على الكبير والراكب على الماشي والماشي على القاعد والقليل على الكثير وأولى الناس بالله من يبدأهم بالسلام ومن الآداب العالية ما أمر به النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أمته من حقوق بعضهم على بعض فقد أمرهم صلى الله عليه وسلم بسبع بعيادة المريض واتباع الجنائز وتشميت العاطس ونصر الضعيف وأون المظلوم وإفشاء السلام وإبرار المقسم يعني أن من حلف عليك أن تفعل شيئا فمن حقه عليك أن تبر بيمينه ولا تحنسه وما ومعنى تشميت العاطش أن تقول لمن عطش وحمد الله يرحمك الله ويجيبك بقوله يهديكم الله ويسلح بالكم ألا وإن من الآداب الفاضلة لين الجالب وبشاشة الوجه وسماحة الخلق وأن لا يضمر لإخوانه المسلمين بغضا ولا حسدا ولا غلا لينال بذلك حبا منهم وإجلالا مقربا ومن حسن الأخلاق حسن السلوك في المعاملات بأن يكون المرء سمحا إذا باع واشترى سمحا إذا قضى ما عليه واقتضى ما له وأن يكون وافيا بما شرط عليه من الشروط الصحيحة ألا وإن من الأخلاق الفاضلة التأدب بالآداب عند الأكل والشرب فليسمي الله عند الأكل والشرب وليحمد الله تعالى إذا فرق وليأكل باليمين ويشرب باليمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وأوفوا بعهد الله إذا عاهدتم بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعنا وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين 
المسلمين والمسلمات خصوصا على أمير المؤمنين سيدنا أبي بكر الصديق رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى أمير المؤمنين سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى أمير المؤمنين سيدنا عثمان بن عفان رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى أمير المؤمنين سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى سيدة النساء أهل الجنة فاطمة الزهراء رضي الله تعالى عنها وعلى سيدة شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين رضي الله تعالى عنهما وعلى الستة الباقية من العشرة المبشرة وعلى أمهات المؤمنين وعلى سائر الصحابة والتابعين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر من نصر الإسلام والمسلمين واخذل من خذل الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعل بلاد الإسلام آمنة مطمئنة من كل البليات والآفات ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون بھائی اس طرف میرے رائٹ سائڈ بہت جگہ ہے آپ جلدی سے پور کر لیجئے آ جائیے آگے تاکہ باہر کھڑے ہوئے بھائی بھی اندر آ جائے جلدی سے پور کر لیجئے شولڈر ٹو شولڈر کھڑے ہیں تاکہ جگہ ہو جائے بیس میں جگہ ہے پور کرو الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والسماء ذات البروج واليوم الموعود وشاهد ومشهود قتل أصحاب الأخدود النار ذات الوقود إذ هم عليها قعود وهم على ما يفعلون بالمؤمنين شهود وما نقموا منهم إلا أن يؤمنوا بالله العزيز الحميد الذي له الذي له ملك السماوات والأرض والله على كل شيء شهيد إن 
الذين فتنوا المؤمنين والمؤمنات ثم لم يتوبوا فلهم عذاب جهنم ولهم عذاب الحريق إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار ذلك الفوز الكبير الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان ربي أنا الله أكبر الله أكبر سبحان ربي الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إن بطش ربك لشديد إنه هو يبدئ ويعيد وهو الغفور الودود ذو العرش المجيد فعال لما يريد هل أتاك حديث الجنود فرعون بل الذين كفروا في تك ذيب والله من ورائهم محيط بل هو قرآن مجيد في لوح محفوظ الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان ربي العالمين الله أكبر الله أكبر سبحان ربي الله أكبر
alone. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله لا إله إلا الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله سيدنا محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا واسعا وعملا صالحا وإيمانا مستقيما وفضلا دائما وشفاء من كل داء اللهم اغفر لحينا وميتنا وشاهدنا وغائبنا وصغيرنا وكبيرنا وذكينا وانثانا اللهم من احييته منا فاحيه على الاسلام ومن توفيته منا فتوفه على الايمان يا فاطر السماوات والارض انت ولينا في الدنيا والاخره توفنا مسلمين والحقنا بالصالحين غير خزايا ولا نداما ولا مفتونين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين برحمتك يا رحم الرحمين <تصفيق>